Good morning, people. Uh, this uh, video, this sermon is going to be posted on December 27 up on our Facebook page. The link of it is actually up on YouTube, and um, I put the link on our Facebook page so that you can listen to it on that Sunday morning uh, or listen to it sometime during the week at, at your convenience. We continue to meet uh, virtually here with these recorded sermons. Uh, someday, we don't, I don't know when yet, we will come back face to face as a local church, as an anchor community church, uh, meeting face to face again. Here's my thinking at the moment. Um, the experts, the medical experts are saying that with the holidays that Probably a week or two later, middle January, there's going to be another spike uh, in COVID cases. Um, so I'm looking at maybe February. We will try to see what the numbers are. The vaccine is out. People are starting to get it. Of course, the the it's it's going to the medical professionals right now. Um, so we don't know. We don't know what the numbers will be, but um, we will continue to meet virtually. I'll continue to post sermons uh, through the month of January, and we'll see what the numbers are like in February. Maybe we can start meeting to gather again. Keep an eye on our Facebook page, our Anchor Community Church Facebook page, and I will put up um, the announcements there about what's going to happen. All right, kind of excited about uh, this uh, this message because we are starting we are starting a brand new book. Uh, we are starting the book of Ruth. We just finished uh, the book of Judges, and uh, that was a, a book that talk, showed the sinfulness and the waywardness and the idolatry and the. Uh, it was just a rough book to see all God's faithfulness certainly comes through in it, but the waywardness of the Israelites in that book. During the period of the judges, probably early during the period of the judges, we're going to talk about that in this message, um, the wonderful story about Ruth takes place. And uh, it kind of balances, you know, you say, whoa, all of these people, wayward, wayward, horrible, sinful people. But yet we have the wonderful story of faithful, godly uh, people with integrity uh, in the book of Ruth. So let's get into, uh, as I do with when I start a new book, I have an introductory lesson, a uh, message. And that's what this one uh, is, which is going to be kind of, we're not actually going to get into the text. We're going to just talk about things related to the book. I think these are important because then when you do get into the text, you got this uh, overall view of the book. But first, as always, I have uh, a humorous and no, uh, this one is about the book of Ruth. You remember the main characters, well, the main character is Naomi, but then you have Boaz and Ruth. Here's a question. What kind of a man was Boaz before he married? Are you ready for this? He was ruthless. Ha, ha, ha. He didn't have Ruth yet, so he was, he was ruthless. All right. I added one more. This next one is a meme I saw on, on Facebook. It's kind of a picture of a Christian ketchup label it says catch up with jesus let us get it you're putting that on your hamburger as well let us praise and relish him and then there's a quote because he loves me from my head tomatoes tomatoes that yeah, ketchup is made out of tomatoes he loves me from my head to my toes all right i thought that was interesting all right, let's get into my outline. Here's my outline. I got a whole bunch of points. As I do with these introductory, when I start a new book, I give, I give an introductory message. And this one, I, I answer a bunch of questions about the book. Uh, I think I got eight points here that we're going to look at. First of all, why study the book of Ruth? Why do we need to get into it? Of course, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and so we need to study all of it. But I got some answers to that question 
uh, pertaining to the book of Ruth. Secondly, when was this book written? Um, when did it take place? Should it, well, we'll try to answer in there as well. The two are not the same. It was not written immediately after uh, the story, uh, the occurrence of Ruth and Boaz. Um, we'll talk about that. Number three, who was the author of the book? Number four, what is the purpose of the book? Now that number one and number four are kind of closely related, but a little bit different. Number five, what are some distinctive features of this book? We're going to talk about that. Number six, I got a brief outline of the book. You will notice in my outline, I have seven points in my outline, and I have, as we go through this book, I have seven messages for the book of Ruth. Number seven, from the viewpoint of Naomi, I know that's not a question, but it's kind of an interesting uh, point. The book is really written from the viewpoint of Naomi, and in point number eight, how do we apply this book? So these are the eight points that I'm going to cover in this message today. All right, point number one, why study this book? In the book of Ruth, we read a tender story of conversion. Ruth converted to Judaism. Ruth followed Naomi's God. Courage determination, loyalty, and faithfulness. It's a wonderful little book, especially immediately following the book of Judges. It takes place during the period of the Judges. And so we see that it wasn't just all um, forsaking the Lord and idol worship and sinfulness. There was some, some great stuff going on during that period. The compa compassion and love shared by Naomi and her daughter-in-law Ruth can inspire those who study this book to consider their relationship with others, both inside and outside of their families. There's a good point. Uh, at one point, Naomi, wanting to help the daughter-in-law, said, no, you just need to go back to your own family. I'm heading back to Israel. I'm heading back to Bethlehem. Uh, you just need to go back to your own family. You will be better off. And Ruth says, no, I'm sticking with you. So there's real loyalty there. They had a wonderful relationship with each other. The book of Ruth can also teach students how the Lord watches over and blesses those who follow him and his teachings. Yeah, uh, they were faithful to obey what the law said especially concerning the uh, kinsman redeemer. You'll hear a lot about that during the book. Okay, point number two. Actually, two questions here. When did the book uh, take place and when was it written? So let's answer those questions. Number one, the book of Ruth tells the history of the family of Elimelech. That was Naomi's husband. Uh, he passed away early in the book but who lived during the time of the judges. We're going to look at Ruth 1, verse 1. It tells us that it took time, took place during the period of the judges. We're going to try to set that, uh, I, I think, early in the period of the judges. Um, so that's when the story of Naomi and Ruth takes place over a little over a 10-year period. Uh, they left and went to Moab um, for 10 years. And then Naomi and Ruth came back, but it was written at a different time. But because, and notice this, at, at the end of the book, there's a genealogy that shows that Ruth and Boaz's child became Obed, who was the father of Jesse, who was the father of David. Um, the genealogy of David is included at the end of the book, chapter 4, verses 17 through 22. The book of, the, of, of Ruth wa, was written, obviously written, probably during David's time. There's no mention of Solomon, um, but it ends with, with David. So it was actually written down. The story was maybe passed down orally for a number of generations, and then it was written down and became a book in our Bible, probably during David's time. 
This book um, takes place during dark days. Yeah, the period of Judges. We just got through, as I said before, with the book of Judges, where all we saw was idol worship and wandering from the Lord and then suffering, um, full of suffering brought about by Israel's apostasy and immorality. And the Lord would judge them. The Lord would send a nation to come on them. And then they would turn back to the Lord. You remember the whole cycle of the Judges. But this book takes place during that time period part of the judgment God brought upon his sinful people included famine and war. We're going to talk about that, maybe not in this message entirely, uh, but, but there was a famine at the time that caused Elimelech and his family to leave Israel and go to Moab. Well, when was that? When did that take place? Well, we're not sure, but I have some ideas on when that took place. It is generally thought that the story of Ruth, the uh, occurrence of Elimelech leaving and then Naomi and Ruth coming back, happened early during the Judges period. Judges period lasted probably 300 and some years before Saul and then David. Um, this happened early in that 300 years. The book of Ruth opens with a report of a famine, which was in Naomi's family out of Beth, which caused Naomi's family to come out of Bethlehem uh, into neighboring Moab. And we're going to look at a map. Moab was not that far from Israel, from Bethlehem. But this famine may not have been caused by, we often think of a famine being uh, caused by drought and by weather. But this famine may have been caused because of uh, an oppression by another country, perhaps during the time of Gideon. You remember the story of Gideon in the book of Judges. It opens up, we're introduced to Gideon, where Gideon is threshing his wheat in a wine press, hiding his wheat from the Midianites uh, so they don't take it from him. Uh, the Midianites were destroying a lot of the crops of Israel, and that could have been the cause of the famine. We'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, Ruth 1.1 says, In the days when judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and the man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Okay? So this is Elimelech, his name is given, and the wife's name and the two sons' names are given a little bit later in these verses. But because there was a famine in the land, doesn't tell us what caused the famine, they left Israel, Bethlehem. Ah, here was, here's the famous Bethlehem. This story takes place, in, here we just got through with Christmas. I hope you had a good Christmas, by the way. This story takes place uh, in Bethlehem, the same little town that Jesus was born in. Joseph and Mary traveled down from Galilee in New Testament times, and there was no room in the inn, and Jesus was born in the stable in Bethlehem. This takes place in the little town of Bethlehem. One of the things in this book, you really see that it was a small town Everybody knew everybody else. Uh, Naomi returns after 10 years, and all the ladies of the town say, oh, that's Naomi. So they all knew her, remembered her. It was a little town where everybody knew everybody else. But so they left Bethlehem, and they went to Moab. Okay, that's when the story took place during the period of the judges. But through four, the end of the book, notice this. And the woman of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi, and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. So the author here knew David, knew David was going to become king. Well, let me continue reading. Now, these are the generations of Perez. Now he actually goes into... Uh, verse 17 is kind of a part of the story, yet, where verse 18 is a formal genealogy. We have those in places. We have them in Matthew. We have them in Luke. We have them back in, in Deuteronomy. Uh, here, here the author gives a formal uh, genealogy. 
Now, these are the generations of Perez. Perez fathered Hezron, Hezron fathered Ram, Ram fathered Aminadab, Aminadab fathered Nashon, Nashon fathered Salmon, <coughs> Salmon fathered Boaz. By the way, Salmon's wife, was Rahab the harlot, who we find during the period of Joshua. So again, it shows that this book was actually took place early in the period of Judges. Anyway, Salmon fathered Boaz, Boaz fathered Obed, and Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered David. Okay, so there's a formal genealogy. All right, now the question. All right. So, in summary, though the story takes place early in the book of Judges, it was written during the time of David, several hundred years later. Okay, who wrote the book? Well, the author of the book of Ruth is unknown. We don't know. It is not stated in the book. You come to many of the books of the Bible. Uh, the book of Proverbs tells us it was a collection from Solomon. Uh, Paul's epistles, he starts off his letters by telling who it's to, who it's from. Um, we know who wrote those books. The book of Ruth has no author in it. It's like a wonderful little short story, uh, a little romance short story, um, and the author is not mentioned in it. Now, as just mentioned, it was written after David became king, but there is no mention of Solomon. So it was during that time period, but we still don't know. Now, Jewish tradition, the Talmud is a collection of the Jewish tradition by the rabbis through the centuries. Their tradition ascribes it to Samuel. You remember Samuel. Samuel was really the last judge, though not included in the book of Judges. Uh, it calls him a judge. He was a prophet of God. Uh, Hannah's son, who grew up in the temple under Eli, became um, a great uh, prophet, <coughs> anointed David as king. The Jewish tradition is it is ascribed to Samuel. It could be, but nothing in the Bible states that. Whoever wrote it was a skilled storyteller. Um, it has been called the most beautiful short story ever written. Wonderful little four chapters, um, wonderful love story between Boaz and Ruth, and shows a hand of God in it. All right, what is the purpose of the book of Ruth? Okay, there's a good question to ask yourself. Number one, letter A, I say, I was going to say number one, to provide a biographical sketch of the pious ancestors of David the king. Okay, if it was written when David was king, this goes back a number of generations, Jesse, Obed, and we see Boaz, who's a very godly man. We see Ruth, who becomes a very godly Israelite. She was a Moabite who, who accepted the God of Israel. Um, Naomi's God and family, and we we find pious ancestors. Even though it's during the time of very wayward judges, David had some very godly ancestors. So perhaps the author wanted to show that. Point number two, to emphasize the fulfillment of God's promises through Judah. Remember back in J Jacob's time, he said the scepter would not depart from the house of Judah, meaning the great Messiah would come out of Judah. Uh, and we see that uh, at the time when the nation Israel had lost her first king, King Saul, who was in the line of Benjamin, not in the line of Judah. And then David comes along and God fulfills his promise. If you go to, we're going to, we're going to look at the genealogies. I think my last sermon, when we look at the genealogies, we're going to look at Matthew, and we're going to look at Luke, and we see the lineage, the genealogy of Jesus Christ um, through Joseph and Mary. And uh, we see he came from the tribe of Judah. Uh, point number C, the purpose of the book, to demonstrate how the Lord supplies for the enormous needs of his people, both individually and nationally, in accordance with his promises. The Lord had built into the law 
that when they were harvesting, they were to leave the corners and the edges of their fields, and they were to provide for the poor people that way. And that's exactly what we see in the book of Ruth. She happens upon Boaz's field, and Boaz has, Boaz has his gleaners actually drop a little bit of extra so that Ruth can have a good gleaning from the field. The Lord supplies for those who are in need. And indeed, to show the picture of Christ as our kinsman redeemer boaz was a picture of jesus christ now we're going to get into that uh you're going to get sick of hearing about the kinsman redeemer but in the law of israel when somebody needed help um poor widow or a or a husband dies and the wife the widow is left childless the closest relative called the gaal the kinsman redeemer is to help them. And, and Boaz is a picture of Jesus Christ, our kinsman redeemer, who came to redeem us from our sins. All right, point number five. What are some distinctive features of this book? Okay, it's an interesting, wonderful little book, and there's some distinctive features in it. Uh, number one, the book of Ruth is one of only two books in the Old Testament named after a woman. Of course, the other one is the book of Esther and presents an example of a woman of faith, strength, and kindness. Actually presents two women in this book. Not only is Ruth uh, a woman of faith, strength, and kindness, but Naomi is as well. Naomi was struggling, and we're going to talk about that. She She has been called the the female job she was struggling with the the terrible losses she had in her family and in the end the lord showed him so faithful to naomi so um book of ruth is named after uh, a woman that's kind of a unique thing. here's another one one uh prominent theme in the book of ruth is that of redemption which applies to all of us ruth was a foreigner childless and a widow which left her in complete poverty with no source of support. Here these two widow ladies come back to Bethlehem and Ruth, a, a foreigner, and didn't know much about Israel and Naomi. And they, in those days, um, widows um, were very, it was very difficult for them to get along in society. Several places in the law talk about how the people of Israel were to help the widows. James in the New Testament talks about true godliness is helping the fatherless and the widows. Well, um, Boaz redeems and helps them. And that's a, that's a prominent feature of the book of Ruth. She could not deliver herself from her destitute condition. She was ultimately redeemed by her kinsman redeemer, Boaz, a man of Bethlehem. All right, here's an outline. Here's, a, here's an outline. You'll find that there's seven points. Now, I have seven messages, but I have an introductory message here, which is kind of overall about the book. So that's not included in this outline. But points number uh, six and seven, I have included together in my sermon. So these basically are going to be my seven sermons. Point number one, the beginning of the book, only five verses talks about a, a big part of the story. Naomi's family travels, but dies. I, I have put that kind of briefly. Elimelech and Naomi leave with their two sons. They go to Moab. And during that time, um, Elimelech dies. And Naomi's two boys, they marry uh, Moabite women, and then they die. And here we got Naomi and two daughter-in-law. So verses one through five, talk about that. Point number two, Naomi hears that the famine is done in Israel, and Naomi is, decides to return to Bethlehem. She, as you remember, she tells uh, the daughters-in-law, no, you go back to your families. You will never have any offspring from 
from me, why come with me? The one daughter-in-law goes back, but Ruth stays with her. Very famous verses. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Ruth says that. So they return back to the small town of Bethlehem where Naomi grew up. Ruth gleans chapter two. Ruth gleans in Boaz's field. We're going to talk in that chapter about Ruth. There were a lot of fields. A lot of, it was barley harvest. There were a lot of fields that Ruth could have gleaned at. And we're going to talk about the providence of God. The field that she happened, happened to come upon was Boaz's field. Boaz says, hey, who's that lady? And Boaz um, helps her. Point number four. Ruth asks Boaz to marry her. Now, that's a little bit backwards. Usually, it's the husband who asks. But the story is Ruth actually goes down to the threshing floor, spends the night sleeping at Boaz's feet, and Boaz wakes up in the middle of the night, and Ruth reminds Boaz of his responsibility as the kinsman redeemer to help the family out. Okay, that's chapter three, all of chapter three. Then we get into chapter four. Most of chapter four is Boaz that night, uh, going back to point number four. He tells um, Naomi, or he tells Ruth, uh, don't worry about it. I will take care of this in the morning. And the very next day, Boaz does that. Boaz um, talks. There was a kinsman redeemer who was closer than Boaz, and he had first right to the Naomi's land and to marry Ruth. Uh, so Boaz talks to him. He won't do it. So Boaz does it. Chapter 4, verses 1 through through 12. And then uh, point number 6, Naomi is blessed with a new family. It's interesting. I say Naomi is blessed. It's actually Boaz and Ruth had a child. But the story, this this book, is really from the, the point of Naomi. We're going to talk about that in my next sermon point here. Um, so it doesn't talk about how Ruth and Boaz love their little child. It talks about how Grandma Naomi loved the little boy. Huh? Um, we are grandparents, and so we really love our grandchildren. Well, we see that. And Naomi's friends say, boy, this child Ruth and this now this child, they are better to you than any other family would be. And then point number seven, at the end of the book, we have this uh, genealogy about uh, how they were in the lineage of uh, the tribe of Judah, of course, being in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a city of Judah, um, and they are the great grandparents of uh, David, who was king. Okay, point number seven. Uh, this story is written, it's kind of unique as you go through there. It's written from the viewpoint of Naomi. You would think it would be written from the viewpoint of Ruth, but Ruth was a young gal. Ruth became, came into a, a new country, didn't know the customs, and you have Naomi who was helping her out. You have the spiritual struggle that Naomi had. When she first came back, they were saying, Naomi, oh, this is Naomi. Naomi's name means pleasant. We're going to talk about that. And Naomi says, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara because she was very bitter because her husband had died. Her two sons had died, left her as a widow, left her with two daughter-in-laws. She was bitter against the Lord, but the Lord helped her and the Lord proved himself faithful in the end. The book was written for Naomi. Naomi's point of view. Every event related back to her, her husband's and son's deaths, her daughters-in-law, her return to Bethlehem, her God, her relative, uh, Boaz, her land to sell, and her grandson. Yeah, all of it centers around Naomi. I think that that's kind of interesting that it was written from the I don't want to say it was a first person viewpoint of Naomi, but it was she seems to be the real center of the book, how the Lord proved himself faithful to her. Almost without fear in scripture, this story views God through the eyes of a woman. Isn't that interesting? God views God through the eyes of Naomi and what she went through. 
Naomi has been called, has been compared to a female Job. She lost everything. Uh, they left her their her hometown, uh, went to a foreign land. Her husband dies. Here she is a widow with two sons. Well, they seem to be older sons because they got married. Um, they could take care of her, but then uh, they got married uh, and the two sons died. We don't know what from, but they died. And here Naomi is left with with the two daughter-in-laws and without anything, destitute, way there in, in the foreign country of Moab. So she went through a whole lot just like Job did. Um, and for a while she was bitter, though Job was not. Job did not sin. Uh, but in the end, she finds out the goodness of the Lord. She lost everything, home, husband, and sons, and every, even more than Job did, her livelihood. She joined the ranks of Israel's lowest members, the poor and the widowed. We talked about that. In that society of that day, the widows were, were destitute. It was a very difficult uh, role to be in. She cried out in her grief and neglected to see the gift that God placed in her path, Ruth. So when Ruth, Naomi told them to go back to their family and Ruth says, no, I want to stay with you. Naomi perhaps considered that as uh, a hardship. Oh, now I got to take care of this young widow lady as well as myself. But Ruth turned out to be a very help to Naomi. In the end, she is blessed by the Lord in a fabulous way. Ruth had been better to her than many sons. That's what all the the, the ladies, it's interesting. The, the ladies of Bethlehem showed you that it was a small town. They all, they talked to Naomi and uh, in the end they say, uh, Ruth has been better to you than many sons. Naomi's bitterness, you got to see this. Uh, they're returning now to Bethlehem. Came back from Moab, coming to Bethlehem, and she's greeted and wrecked. She's. It was 10 years. The book tells us it was 10 years that they had left and were in Moab. Now they come back home, and Ruth, or, um, Naomi is recognized by all of her old friends there, and, his, don't, and they call her, oh, Naomi's back. So verse 20. Naomi responds to them, don't call me Naomi, she told them, call me Mara. Mara is the Hebrew word for bitter, because the uh, Almighty has made my life very bitter. That's what she was feeling at the time. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me pleasant? Naomi's name means pleasant. The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. Now, unlike Job, you can hear in her voice here that she was hurt. She felt the Lord had treated her unfairly. But we'll see that the Lord comes through in the end. To the end of the story of Ruth, you see that. Here's, here's these verses. So Boaz took Ruth. And she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. It's interesting. She did not have a baby from her first husband. The Lord had closed her womb, and now the Lord enables her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, these are the ladies of Bethlehem, Praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. The ESV, we, I've been preaching from the ESV for a number of years here now. Um, it calls, instead of a kinsman redeemer, it translates that goal, that's the Hebrew word, as guardian redeemer. Uh, so they literally call him. They not left you without somebody to take care of you and redeem you out of your trouble. May he become famous throughout Israel. They're talking about the child that's born. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you as... Uh, 
who has loved you, I'm under my video there, I can't read that word, is better to you than seven sons. So the Lord proved himself here to be uh, faithful. Uh, the Lord had purposes for what uh, happened to Naomi. And the Lord, uh, when she looked to him, the Lord blessed her in the end of the story. All right, how do I apply this book? The book of Ruth came along at a time of sinful living in Israel's history and appropriately called the people back to a greater responsibility and faithfulness before God, even in difficult times. This call applies just as clearly to us today. You see godliness in Ruth. You see godliness in Boaz. Boaz was a man of character. We are to live that. Even living in a um, wicked society, we are to live faithfully for the Lord. That's one way we can apply it. We belong to a loving, faithful, and powerful God who has never failed to care and provide for his children. For a while, Naomi felt bitter against the Lord. A root of bitterness had grown up in her. The book of Hebrews talks about a root of bitterness that could grow up in our lives. Uh, but the Lord proved himself faithful. Like Ruth and Boaz, we are called to respond to that divine grace in faithful obedience in spite of the wee evil culture in which we live. Remember, they were in the period of the judges, a very evil culture that they were living in, and yet they proved faithful to the Lord. Are you willing? Are you willing to live faithfully for the Lord no matter what? sinful acts are going on around us in our culture today. All right, let's conclude this message in prayer. Father, thank you for this little book. We looked at an introduction to it today. As we go through it, may we learn the lessons that you have from this little book for our lives. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable to us for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. May this book instruct us in how to live righteous. Thank you, Father. Bless this to us in Jesus' name. Amen.